All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to Phantom Weather Channel. In today's video, we are going to be talking about what is continuing to look like a significant multi-day severe weather event to start next week. It will likely result in widespread severe weather on Monday, with strong tornadoes possible through Monday night. A potential tornado outbreak, as the Storm Prediction Center is already calling it to be a possibility on Tuesday across Dixie Alley, and some continuing all-hazard severe weather to follow to the east on Wednesday as well. If you guys do enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to Fans of Weather Channel with notifications turned on. Also, be sure to drop a like on the video if you guys would like other people to get this information as well. This is likely going to be one of the most significant severe weather risks we have forecasted in, or forecasted in a long time on this channel. So let's get right into it here. First off, we are taking a look at our Day 3 Categorical Outlook of Severe Weather from the Storm Prediction Center. And as you guys can see, we already have an enhanced risk of severe weather out for portions of East Central Texas into West Central Louisiana for Monday and Monday night of this coming week. This is just south of the DFW area here, uh, south of Shreveport into west central Louisiana. Uh, we could be looking at all severe weather hazards here. Surrounding it in this yellow area, a slight risk of severe weather is out for scattered severe weather. And in this dark green area, isolated severe weather is possible. And this could be a possibility all the way up into western Arkansas and southern Oklahoma as well. So we need to watch this closely. Monday is going to be the day that all of this madness starts. And even though we can't look at our individual outlooks yet because it is too far out, what we can look at is uh, the chance of seeing a severe thunderstorm within 25 miles of a given location. So that would be a 30 to 45% chance of seeing that throughout our enhanced risk region. But in this black hatched area here within the red region, uh, this is where significant severe weather is possible. So not only are you looking at a good chance of seeing severe weather close to your house, but in this black, uh, this black shaded area here, a significant severe weather is especially likely for Monday and Monday night. So let's get right into the forecasting. We are using our 6Z NAM model for this one here, and we are speeding this up to about noon central time on Monday. By that point, we'll be looking at widespread temperatures that go from the mid-40s in the central and southern plains down into the 60s in Texas uh, and even in the 70s here throughout the eastern portion of the Texas Panhandle down through southern uh, Texas. So we got some pretty warm temperatures for these thunderstorms to work with. But it looks like at this point, these thunderstorms will really just be getting started. Uh, taking a look at our dew points at this point, we still got some pretty rich dew points up for eastern Texas here. In these blue areas, dew points are well into the 60s. We see a little bit of a dry line starting to form here in western Texas. Uh, and dew points infecting into the lower 50s all the way into so extreme southern Oklahoma here. But Oklahoma doesn't have great thermod thermodynamic environment at this point. Here would be our surface-based CAPE, and CAPE stands for Convective Available Potential Energy. What it is is just the amount of energy that's in the atmosphere for thunderstorms to initiate, and the reason we call this thunderstorm fuel is because the more of it there, that there is, uh, thunderstorms can often grow a lot easier uh, and just develop a lot easier as well. So uh, typically CAPE values over 1,000 are especially sufficient um, for severe weather episodes. And we do have that throughout portion of central Texas into northwestern Texas as well. We even see K values between 1 and 3,000 there throughout central and southeastern Texas. Here is our bulk shear, our surface to 500 millibar bulk shear. And what this basically is, uh, is the ingredients that are in the atmosphere that will help these thunderstorms organize. And in some cases, help these thunderstorms rotate as well, especially once we see these shear values that are getting into these pinks and reds with those shear values over 45 knots. Uh, it's especially favorable to help these thunderstorms develop mesocyclones and begin rotating uh, and, and just to help these storms become super cellular. So we do see some pretty good shear in the area at this point. Here's what our storms actually look like. As you can see, we got a 999 low situated over the eastern portion of the Texas Panhandle. And to the east of it here, uh, developing along and out ahead of a dry line, we see widespread thunderstorm development throughout uh, eastern Kansas, throughout Oklahoma, and into eastern Texas. This stuff, especially in east central Texas, is in the best environment for severe weather at this point. Uh, speeding up three hours later, these storms are going to continue progressing eastward. And then eventually, here's the situation by Monday evening. 
we still got widespread thunderstorms over eastern Texas, uh, up towards the central plains, into the Ozarks at this point. But here's the environmental ingredients that we are working with. You'll notice that dry line getting even more significant throughout central Texas by Monday evening. We go from widespread temperatures in the mid and upper 60s, quickly dropping into the 20s uh, behind this advancing dry line here. We do have some thunderstorms developing near or along this dry line. The rest of it is going to be out ahead of it here. And the stuff developing along a dry line is in a very good environment for severe weather. So here's our bulk shear. We still got some very strong shear in the surrounding area. Definitely going to be helping those thunderstorms rotating. But here is our significant tornado parameter, or STP. And even though this is only one model scenario, uh, and we will have to break this down a little bit further, I do want to show you guys what this model is saying so far. And uh, our significant tornado parameter is just a calculation of several different environmental ingredients that are favorable for strong tornadoes to occur. It typically values over one over top of storms are especially uh, something that we need to look at a little bit further because it's indicating an increased environment for potential significant tornadoes. And we actually see STP values between about one and four throughout eastern Texas. Um, which is going to be sufficient to help the or for these thunderstorms to potentially be significant tornado producers. As we get three hours later, these storms are going to continue progressing eastward uh, across the Arklatex area here. We now have thunderstorms making their way into western Louisiana, which the Storm Prediction Center says as they cross uh, into Louisiana in eastern Texas here, we have a strong tornado threat, as was also being depicted by our STP uh, just before this. As we get towards midnight, the storms will continue their way eastward, continue to grow up scale a little bit, as well, it appears. And as we see cold air making its way into the southern plains, over top of this precipitation, we actually have some snowfall as well as being depicted by the NAM here uh, in the southern plains, which is definitely something interesting for sure. And then as we get into early Tuesday morning, which would be the start of the day four period of severe weather and could also be very significant in terms of the severe weather that it will bring, uh, we will likely start the day with widespread thunderstorms from eastern Texas up through at least the Ohio Valley. So here's our day four outlook of severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center. And yesterday, we did have a 30% area throughout eastern Louisiana, throughout central Mississippi, and into extreme west central Alabama. Since then, this morning, that outlook area has uh, increased in size. The outlook around it has increased in size as well. So overall, this is not looking good. We have a large 30% chance of seeing a severe thunderstorm within 25 miles of a given location. But given what the Storm Prediction Center is saying right now, I do think that this will be increased from an enhanced risk as we get closer to the event. In the Storm Prediction Center's words, they are calling this a potential uh, potential regional tornado outbreak is what they are calling this in their outlook here, which is not common. The Storm Prediction Center typically does not, if they're going to call something a tornado outbreak, they're not typically calling it three days out from an event. And even though they're not saying that it's 100% going to happen, they are noting that there is a pretty sizable possibility of this being a regional tornado outbreak on Tuesday across central and southern Mississippi, which is huge for the Storm Prediction Center to say something like that. So uh, we have to keep an eye on that it definitely does raise an alarm uh it the environment is looking very favorable for tornadoes on tuesday as these storms progress eastward across dixie alley so it's not looking good at all we really need to watch this closely for sure and a risk of all hazards scattered severe weather will likely continue through the eastern gulf states in the southeast on wednesday and wednesday night as well at least for the first portion of the day on wednesday but then the risk will gradually fade away after that we don't expect much on thursday it appears so let's see what these storms are looking like and uh, we are speeding this up to early Tuesday morning. This will be about 6 or 7 a.m., give or take a couple hours, because, again, this is still a uh, pre-range model here. Uh, for Tuesday morning, and as you guys can see, we will likely be seeing widespread thunderstorms here throughout eastern Texas and into western Tennessee, as at least being shown on the screen here. Uh, and taking a look at our dew points at this point, our thermodynamic environment with temperatures and dew points, uh, and that is looking pretty good. We got widespread dew points here in the mid to upper 60s uh, throughout much of the, or throughout much of Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Arkansas, into eastern Texas. These storms are in a very moist environment. It's going to help these thunderstorms continue popping up here. Here's our bulk shear again, our surface to 500 millibar bulk shear. And again, this is still quite significant, especially surrounding these storms at this point. 
Uh, we have some significant bulk shear in the surrounding area going to help those storms rotate, but this is going to be an increasing threat throughout the day, it appears. Three hours later, as we get into the late morning, these storms will cross into Mississippi, and eventually, by the time that we are getting into about noon on Tuesday or 1 p.m. on Tuesday, as being depicted by this model, these storms will break apart a little bit uh, throughout the throughout Dixie Alley. Now, because this is still not a convective allowing model, it is a higher or higher resolution model, but it is not a convective allowing model. So because of that, there's several different severe weather ingredients that we can't really accurately look at just yet, or not accurately, but we can't get a great grasp on what it's looking like at this point. And we also can't tell because it's not a super high resolution model. We can't see the exact storm mode for this either. We don't know if these storms are more close together or like packed together or if they are more off on their own. Those storms that are more off on their own, separated, those storms are going to have an easier time rotating than those storms that are in a large mesoconvective system. And uh, those storms would be called discrete thunderstorms, the storms that are kind of off on their own. We can't get a good look at that yet because uh, we need our high-resolution convective allowing models to come in. So uh, it is looking like uh, these storms will separate a little bit and increase in coverage by about midday on Tuesday. Here would be our surface-based cape at this point. We got widespread cape between 1 and 2,000, locally higher throughout eastern Louisiana and southern Mississippi. So that's very good energy in the atmosphere for new thunderstorms to initiate, potentially severe. Year. And here is our storm relative helicity, or SRH, uh, our zero to three kilometer storm relative helicity. What storm relative helicity basically is, is as long as there is good thermodynamic ingredients in the atmosphere for thunderstorms to initiate, if we see high uh, storm relative helicity values over top of these storms, that indicates an increasing potential for right moving supercells to have cyclonically rotating mesocyclones. And that cyclonic rotation within the supercells is what is going to uh, ultimately produce tornadoes. Remember that not all supercells produce tornadoes, and there is no exact threshold for storm relative helicity. However, higher values do typically indicate higher increased potential for tornadic rotation. And this is just off the charts. This is extremely high storm relative helicity values throughout Dixie Alley into the central Gulf states, the southern portion of the Tennessee Valley, and the further south we go, especially throughout Mississippi and eastern Louisiana, we've got very good ingredients for these storms to continue developing, continue on a strengthening trend. When you add storm relative helicity and strong shear to those kind of storms, that is a recipe for madness. And uh, again, this is kind of right around the point where we could be looking at that regional tornado outbreak like the storm prediction center was saying throughout central and southern mississippi for sure and this is not going to be the end of the severe weather risk it will continue throughout the day on tuesday and then also continue into at least the first portion of wednesday as well so we are watching all of this closely as we do get closer to the event new models will come in allowing us to get a better idea of what these actual storms are going to do but that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you guys did enjoy it and you want to see more of them, be sure to subscribe to Phantom Weather Channel. Also, be sure to drop a like on the video. Uh, but until the next video, stay safe, and we'll talk to you guys back here next time.